The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the December 22nd, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and me at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't dial in, we've got you covered. You can send me an email, send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a sea of green out there. Dow's up 34, S&P's up 13, NASDAQ 34, Russell's up 14, semis are up 16, the trendies are up 106, gold's up 20 bucks, silver's up two pennies, Like to recruit back 31 cents, natural gas off two cents, 30-year treasury printed out 123.28, that's off three ticks. The leaders in the clubhouse, dollar-wise, the upside, Karuna Therapeutics, up 47%, 101 bucks there, I believe that's a buyout. ANSYS up 28 bucks, 9%. Madrigal Pharmaceuticals, 16 bucks, 7%. MicroStrategy, 14 bucks, 2.5%. Argenix is up uh, about 15 bucks. That's a 4% move there. We got some movers. The Shakers leading the charge. Netties down 17 bucks, 17%. Deckers Outdoor, 15 bucks, 2%. Super Micro, 15 bucks, 5%. Nike down 12 bucks, 10% move there. Synopsis Inc. off 12 bucks. That's a 2% move. So those are our movers, and those are our shakers. But let's begin the day by taking a look at those daily equity future contracts. We reference that during the uh, 11 a.m. update, and here you can see we've just simply got a good old-fashioned consolidation with inside of profiles. The ES, the NQ, the Dow have each tested the top of those profile levels. For the ES, it's 48.12. For the Russell, uh, for the uh, NQ, it's at 16.992, and for the Dow, it's up at the 37.871. Now. In the case of the Russell 2000, it is trading slightly above the top of its daily profile. The top is at 2045, but the level that the Russell would need to take out in order to suggest that uh, it gets bullish again is the high from December 20th, that old dark cloud cover candle. That high out there is 2064.40. So that's the level where 2052.90 right now. 2064.40 is where the Russell would need to close above to suggest that we have some kind of breakout out there. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the daily equity future contracts. Where else do we want to go? And that's a great question out there. Where do we want to go? Let's go take a look at... Let's go take a look at the daily and weekly version of this. So let's start there. We'll switch screens for that because it's in, we're at the end of the week. Let's see what the end of the week signals are telling us. So we'll put those charts up on our screen. Those we're going to take a look at as the white background. So we'll begin to take a look at the ES Mini. So in the ES Mini on the daily time frame, we do not have a topping pattern. Period. End of story. We just have a consolidation with inside this profile. Now, if price closes below the bottom of that profile for two consecutive sessions, 47.24, uh, now, what's interesting here, so I want to point this out, is that the uh, the first, uh, the black background charts that you and I looked at, those are, uh, e, that's e-signal data. 
In this case right here, I've got the same data coming through, but it has generated a different profile. And that happens. Somebody might look at that and say, man, why is that happening to us? I would say that's happening for us. So we got two different systems, use the same data. They do the same type of math out there. They generate different output. We use them both. And so not just 4741 is a key level. The real key level inside of the ES Mini is going to be 4723. That's the area that price must close below in order to suggest some kind of change in trend. We look at the weekly time frame. It says prepare for a change in trend. It says you're going to complete bar number eight of a TD nine count. Now, bar number nine needs to complete next week. Odds favor that's going to happen unless we see just simply some type of crash to the downside. Not likely since we're in the most favorable seasonal period uh, for the equity markets out there. But that does say that in January or February, we could get a TD nine count top on the weekly time frame. We take a look at the NQ. The NQ does have a TD nine count top. What the NQ needs to do in order to get it so close above the top of its profile, much like the Russell 2000, wouldn't really be saying a whole lot. What it needs to do is close above the high from December 20th. That's the bar that's labeled number one that you're looking at. And that high is 1707350. If price were to close above that, then that tells us we about a strong upward momentum move for the daily time frame. We can see on the weekly basis, we're also going to be in bar number eight this week. That'll complete. Odds favor, we see a completed TD9 count top uh, come the end of next week. Not really great. Uh, well, it's, well, to a certain extent, it's, it's actually kind of a great signal as we come to the time period where the Dow will typically make a top or the d equity markets will make a top. And that's usually the first week of January. And in essence, that's the signal coming from the ES and the NQ. Turns out that's the same signal coming from the Dow, the YM. Bar number eight is going to complete this week. Odds favor it will complete that TD9 count top uh, or confirm a TD9 count top at the end of next week. Now, it could be the following week where we see that high, and I think that's the likely outcome. You know, we typically see the rally extend itself into the early part of January, and then maybe we get snockered. Now, that snocker will typically take us down into the end of January or uh, uh, middle part of February out there. Uh, if that doesn't happen, or even if we do get that, and we don't take out whatever the high is uh, that uh, takes place during that first week of January, that says it could be a very ugly 2024. But we'll take things one step at a time. Speaking of one step at a time, inside the Dow Equity Future contract, there is no top there either. We just have a consolidation with inside that profile. Now, its bottom of the profile, 37307, is the same on both of Stevie's systems. Finally, we get to the Russell 2000. The Russell 2000 is in a world of its own. It could care less what the ES, the NQ, and the Dow are doing on a daily time frame. You can see it's got to sell the D point. You don't see the A to B equals CD pattern, but you can see that bare sash candle. I call it dark cloud cover. My apology. That high at 2064.40. On the weekly time frame, we also do not have any kind of topping signal. But I'll still take my P's and Q's from the ES, the NQ, and the Dow versus the Russell 2000. So that's our overview of the equity markets. What should you expect and anticipate? Well, I would say you should expect and anticipate a further move higher out there, likely through that first week of January. How much? Much higher that I don't know well actually I could I could give you a figure where is it that the Dow could actually move up to let's take a look at this let's go back to that black background chart momentarily before we finish this uh, segment here and go to the uh, break but here are the horizontal monthly horizontal trading ranges out there it's not out of the question to have the Dow get up to that 40,000 level 39,459 is its next monthly horizontal trading range boundary line. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So during that break, check the emails, uh, get for requests out there, as I always do. And one of the one of the uh, emails that came in said, "I'm confused." Well, if one person's confused, there's probably another person that's confused out there. The message goes like this: I thought you said just a few days ago you're getting a top on daily signals, and that's correct. I did say that a few days ago. In fact, I can tell you the exact day that I said that, Kevin, and that was on December 20th. But I think if you go back and you take a look at that December 20th show, it's archived out there. What you'll see is that's a day that could have formed a TD9 count top for the ES Mini and for the Dow. It did not. It violated the TD9 count rule. So those two instruments on their daily time frame do not have a top, period, end of story out there. We also got some new profiles that formed that day, and that was really helpful because prior to those profiles, when we did potentially have those topping signals, such as we did get a confirmed TD9 count top inside the NQ out there, it looked like we could have had it really much lower. But those profiles, it gives you and I a competitive advantage out there. Let's not tell anybody about it, but when we get those profiles, it really helps us to figure out what is going on. As an example out there, what are those profiles helpful for? We'll go switch back to the black background charts because I can show that to you in a heartbeat. And here goes Stevie's heartbeat. We go back to the daily time frame. We went through this yesterday out there, but let's do it again. Back on the trading day here, Kevin, of uh, November the 22nd, that was an actual TD9 count top that had formed. Now, one could have gone short there. In fact, Nancy in the den asked the question, how come you're not going short? And the reason was because we had that bullish looking profile out there and that said not until you close below the bottom of that profile that bottom of that profile back then was at the uh, 15959 level would that tell you you've got a change in trend out there for example you can come back here and take a look at the trading days of uh, January uh, J July 21st and July 24th once we broke through that that cracked 
and said, okay, we likely have a change in trend. Turned out that was, in fact, the case out there. In fact, a few days later, on the trading session of November 29th, what the NQ did was it generated a Rhodes momentum indicator top. That really got the hair standing on the back of my neck, but I also knew that support was support, and until support is broken, and we had some other signals that we were looking at, or I was looking at, such as the DAX, which was uh, continuing to move higher. And knowing about the correlation between the NASDAQ 100 and the DAX out there, that was saying, yeah, you might be getting some false signals here, Stevie. And in fact, on the 20th, that was really the proof in the pudding out there. I'm sorry, not the 20th, but on December the 4th out here. And December the 4th, price moved down, tested and rejected that profile out there. So back here to the trading day of December 20th. That completed the TD9 count top for the NQ. Price has got to close below that 16,664 level, Kevin, in order to generate some type of change in trend out there. So sorry for the confusion, but I think if you go back and you listen to the archive on that day, I actually gave out the parameters of where price needed to close in order for a TD9 count pattern to confirm out there. But I appreciate that you wrote in about that because I want to make sure that nobody else was confused about what Stevie was really communicating. So now let's go back to those white background screens and start getting to the requests that have come in out here. Otherwise, Santa's going to deliver Stevie a big bag of coal. And Stevie doesn't want coal for the holidays. What I do want well, I'm not going to tell you what I want, but here's what I do want. I want to go take a look at the requests that have come in. Let's start by taking a look at the one that came in yesterday. Of course, I recorded the show early, uh, as you know, and uh, that was uh, that came in from Jim. And Jim's question was specific about ticker symbol M-A-R-A. -A. And that's what we've got up on the screen. And his question was, or his request was, when should he lighten up? Right now, it's trading out. At, it shows on my system, my apology, 2601. It's really trading at 2644. What we can see out here, Jim, is today is going to become bar number eight of a TD nine count pattern. Odds favor that it will go ahead and confirm a TD nine count top. As I say, bottom, a TD nine, uh, bar number eight, uh, a TD nine count top come Tuesday. Remember, the markets are closed on Monday. Now, that pattern will not complete until Wednesday. So it makes sense about the lightening up. But what we can see out here on the daily time frame is if you just simply come back to the trading day of December the 11th, we have not seen price even spike below a prior bar's low. Jim, I, I, you, know, you don't have to be a technician to know that that is an absolute bullish signal. Because why? Because we've been taking out prior day's highs, such as today. So this says, you know, uh, this looks really good to Stevie. If we take a look at that weekly time frame chart, that's one heck of a bar number nine, isn't it, folks? Typically, markets don't end on wide-ranging bars. So that says to me that Mara, if it's going to form a top on a weekly basis, that's not going to come until we get to New Year's Eve next Friday out there. The monthly chart is suggesting that if this is only a counter trend move for that time frame, price will find resistance at 31.35. I can understand the question. Um, but I, what I don't have here is any kind of a signal that suggests right now that you should lighten up on this. But go ahead and do that. you got to do what's right for you out there. Um, but it looks to me like this wants to continue to move higher. And I would say at least on Tuesday, maybe on Wednesday as well. And then I'd have to ask the question, because this looks really pretty good out here, this uh, chart, is uh, can you weather a retracement? Can your weather retracement back to that green oscillator and change line out there at the 2110-ish type area out there? Let's take things one step at a time. We understand the question about lightening up. I just don't see that in the cards today. Uh, next question that came, and I apologize, I did not write down the name. Um, I didn't write down a name for a couple of them, is Nike. So Nike, obviously, out with uh, earnings after... Oh, no, that's bad news if this screen goes out. Whoosh. That was a Nike swoosh that it gave me. Maybe maybe Nike doesn't want me to talk about it. But here's what we've got. If you love the TD9s, which I believe that most of the people in the den do, well, that's the topping pattern that formed out here on the trading day of December 9th, uh, December 19th out there. It was a TD9 count top. That high is the key critical level. That's at 123.34. Price must close above that to negate that signal. I don't have any other top out here, any other topping pattern. I do see an A to B equals CD to the upside. There was a bearish shooting star that formed yesterday. So that's a second top. Uh, oh, no, that was two days ago. That's a second top that Nike generated. Do two tops make a difference? No, not really. 
not to Stevie at least, uh, on a weekly time frame. Last week, you completed a TD nine count top as well. So it's really not a surprise to us out here when we take a look at Nike's behavior. Now, granted, yesterday's close was above the top of his bearish structured profile. It was kind of a signal to you and I that it was getting ready to take out that TD nine count top on the daily time frame. But the weekly chart was saying, well, maybe not so fast. Now, the question that came in, do you see a buy point? Should I buy Nike right here and now? I wish I could answer that question as yes or no out here. What I don't have is a confirmed test of support. And that's what you'd really like to see. Now, maybe because price hasn't pulled back to support, that's actually encouraging and says, yeah, maybe we should go ahead and take a long position in Nike. But my preference, because you've got a wide ranging bar, you've got, let me see what the volume is on my other screen out here, just so I've got more accurate volume. So far today, it's major volume, 25 million shares as we're coming down. The preference would be for this to go test that support level, which is 106.82 on the daily time frame, 107.01 on the weekly time frame. Of course, when we get to that, we take a look at intraday charts to figure out if there's any other bottoming signal out here. And we take a look at a 30 minute chart. The answer to that question is absolutely not. I probably have to go down to maybe a 15 minute chart, see if there's some kind of pattern there. No, there's not. I don't have any kind of buy signal on Nike other than price hasn't been able to make its way all the way back to support out there. So I do hope that helps you out and best of luck. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Com. 
Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at the charts here for American Express. I, I apologize. I did not write down the name of who requested this, but I do have the the uh, uh, the information about what was requested. And it's this. The individual is looking to put in a trailing stop. And uh, the question was, should that trailing stop be $3.36, I believe it was, or something like that? If we take a look at the American Express charts up here, I've got the 10-day average true range. That's at the very bottom of the screen. You can see right now that says 336 out there. And if you use only the average true range as your protective stop, I would say just sell it now. And the reason is because the average range, we don't like to do anything that's average around here. It's just, hey, you do something average, what kind of results are you going to get? Less than average results. So what we want to do here is you want to make sure that your stop, to the extent that you are trying to stay in the position out there, you want to have it as some level greater than the average true range. I suggest using an average true range of 10 days. That's basically a two-week average true range out there. Now, my recommendation is to multiply that times some Fibonacci number whether that's 1.272 or 1.618. If you use 1.618 as an example, your stop would be about $5.40 or so, 540, 541 out there. So that's my suggestion if you're going to use the average true range method for generating protective stops out there. And what that really does is it gives us first a guideline, a first guideline calculation. The second step is once you would have that calculation, let's assume that it's $5.50 for right now and price is trading at 185.50. So what we'd be looking at is a stop around 183. Well, 183, where does that take us to? It's just below the top of that daily profile for Nike because on a move lower, that becomes the first level of support that it would test. So maybe the stop actually needs to be a little bit larger than that because just poking through there and not closing through there, you know, maybe you want to hold it. Now, let's go take a look at the American Express charts that have all my pattern tools on them. So go take a look at this. And this is why I believe the question is being asked today. So very perceptive trader out there. And that trader knows that there's a TD nine count top that is going to confirm today. It'll complete on Tuesday. And that would be a reason. You also have wave number seven coming off of the uh, lows out here. Now, that wave number seven pattern needs a lower high to confirm. So you couldn't get that until the end of Tuesday out there. But the TD9 and the TD9 count top will complete on Tuesday, at the end of Tuesday out there. Turns out on a weekly basis, American Express has got a Bar number eight of its TD9 count. That says you could get a top between today and the next couple of weeks out there. And the monthly chart says, hey, I would like to go retest what looks like it's its all-time high. It's trading into that swing point. That's from February of 2022. Now, the volume there was 78 million shares. We are at 58 million shares today. I don't know that we'll have... Uh, 20 million shares come next week on an average daily basis. The volume on this is, uh, well, it's 4 million, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's possible out there to have that volume as it moves in there. But nonetheless, we take a look at the TD9 count wave number seven uh, top out here that uh, is forming inside of the daily time frame. The first level of support on a pullback out here is going to be the top of the profile. If price moves below that, the next area would be at 182.10. That's the oscillator and change line. Below that, 180.37. Below that, 174.97. Below that, 165 and change out there. So you just kind of go through your progression of steps. Again, it's all about being able to easily identify support and resistance and really that's what these tools allow us to do and the nice thing is you don't have to worry about it being stevie's opinion it's objective there's no opinion here at all it's just simply know where your resistance is and in the case of american express resistance would be up at 192.42 that's its weekly td9 count breakdown resistance level there's no other resistance that stevie has out there so i and your question was how often should you set that you could do it daily, but take into account where your other areas of support are. You'd certainly hate to have your stop just above support for prices to simply come back there, test, 
and reject that level out there. So great question. Thanks so much for asking it. Let's go on to our next question, and that is from ELO. And we'd like to take a look at Decker's Outdoor. D-E-C-K is the uh, ticker symbol. Decker's Outdoor, uh, what did this have as a topping pattern? Wave number seven. Thank you, Basil Chapman. It's a very small portion. In fact, it's so infinitesimal portion of the uh, Chapman wave. This is not the Chapman wave. Just happens to be one little piece of it. What did that wave number seven turn out to do? Pull back and test support. The first level of support was up at the 713 area. The second level was 693. The third level, which is tested this morning, was 68616. And below that was 68229 out there. So is this a buy by pulling back to support? Well, ordinarily I'd say yes, but now I won't because I'm not ordinary. Why wouldn't I ordinarily, why am I not going to do what's ordinarily saying? Yeah, because if we take a look at the weekly chart now, we're going to get a confirmed TD nine count top. It's confirmed. It will complete next week out there. What should happen? Well, price should pull back to test its oscillator and change line. That's at 650, 659. The monthly chart is going to confirm a TD nine count top as well. Now, it could be January that completes, it will be January that completes that pattern, but we don't know whether it will identify a higher high out there. So when I re-enter Decker Outdoor, I think that was the question. Well, you're asking where is the entry price? It's right here right now. 682.29, 686.16, those areas have held out there. But because of the weekly and the monthly time frame chart my suggestion is maybe to look elsewhere out there and let's see how those other larger patterns actually play out when it comes to decker's outdoor jane wants to take a look at tesla tsla is a turkey symbol out here tesla is bullish when we take a look at its daily time frame in fact with tesla's chart are signaling to and i well hold on a minute here stevie hold on a minute here I take that back. ICA sell the D point pattern that was confirmed out here on the 20th with that bear sash candle. Also, there's a new profile. So in order for Tesla to truly get bullish, it's really neutral right now. And I'll explain that in a moment. You've got it's got to close above the top of its profile, 259.84. So that's your first level of resistance. The second is at 265.41. The reason why I say it's neutral is because that high, that sell the D point pattern that formed on the 20th was also a test of its oscillator and change line which is green, tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero. Bullish conditions, period, end of story out there. Now, price is trading with inside that profile, so it's really just a neutral type of uh, signal right now in the daily time frame, Jane. The weekly time frame is not neutral. The weekly time frame says, Steve-O, I want 272.32. And the monthly chart is supporting that idea right now because it's trading above its green oscillator unchanged line out there. Um, so that's what I see when we take a look at Tesla J, and I hope that helps you out. Um, if I take a look at if I, if your question was, and I didn't write this down, if you're looking for an entry point out there inside of Tesla, you're so close to resistance areas out here. I kind of hesitate on that, uh, 259 and 265. So if you're really looking to buy or an intraday trade, I'd say a test of that green oscillator and change line would be a spot at about 250.91 or some type of bottoming signal on a short-term time frame chart. I know you also wanted to take a look at Coinbase. COIN is a ticker symbol there. We take a look at it. Today is going to confirm a TD9 count top. You've got a Rose Mintum indicator signal that's been triggered. Uh, that needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm the top. Coin will confirm, should confirm, a TD9 count top on Tuesday. Complete that pattern on Wednesday. I think we're also looking for an entry price here. Knowing that we got a TD9 count top that's coming, I wouldn't uh, take a look at it. The weekly, you've got a TD9 count. Bar number eight is going to complete this week. And likely you're going to get a TD9 count top that's going to confirm next week. And the monthly is going to complete its nine count TD9 count top this month out there. So Coinbase, I wouldn't be getting long this now. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, there was a second part of that American Express uh, question. First was about the stop. The second was, the question was, do I ever exit on a target before getting stopped out? The answer to that question is yes. Now you might not know what that means. So when I put together a trade, uh, what I always do is I, I have the uh, stop in place. I've identified the stop before we trade, and I've identified the target exit. That way it becomes fairly easy to calculate a reward risk. If your reward risk isn't where you need it to be, maybe you shouldn't be getting in that trade. Now, I put those target exits up there. Those target exits are guidelines because as price moves up, each day we need to step back, take a look at the chart, and see what new patterns might be out there. Uh, so if the pattern, um, you know, maybe it's moving into a bearish uh, a structure, profile and you've got a wave seven top or a td9 count then the answer to that question is yeah i would go ahead and take that exit so you got to manage it when you get into the trade this is stevie's philosophy when you get into the trade you've got everything all set up so if it goes against you you've got your limited one percent of your uh of your uh, trading uh, uh, capital that's been at risk. When I say 1%, I'm referring to the stop size that we've uh, got out there, and uh, and you know where your targets are at. So you've got everything set up before it trades, and then you have to manage it each day. Take a look at that. It's a market's responsibility to generate new information for us, and it needs to generate that new information for us each day, just like it did on the 20th. We were anticipating TD9 count tops in the ES and the uh, Dow. Those were negated because of the price action. When that price action gets it's negated it helps you to assist in fact is one of the reasons that um, i did not go short the uh, markets uh, especially after that trading session a lot of people would have seen the market headed lower and said hey i'm going to jump on that freight train but they didn't have access perhaps to the profiles that i did out there and that was very helpful in doing that also you had two instruments that are saying i don't have a top 
So is the market going to top without all of them having tops? Well, at least you need a couple of them, the ES, the NQ. That would be helpful. The Dow, that would certainly be helpful out there. Uh, so anyways, let's go on to our next request, which is for Snap out here. This is for Yvonne. And Snap here, Yvonne, has a TD9 count top. That TD9 count top occurred on the 9th. Right now, you've got and what happened then the following day. Price pulled back and tested support. So its overall signal now is neutral. You've got a price consolidation with inside its profile. So it's a bullish structured profile. The buy zone is 1629 to 1661. The sell area is 1758 or the top of that TD9 count pattern. And the top of that TD9 count pattern is 1790. Turns out now it would be buying snap just because price held support out there. And the reason I say that is because we have a TD9 count top that's going to complete on the weekly time frame. And that says price should really pull back towards 1279. Now we know you got to see a close below 1629 before that happens out there. We also have the monthly time frame chart for Snap that's right at the resistance level, the top of its monthly profile. So I wouldn't be going uh, long here, and I would definitely not be going short. It's a $17 instrument. Can't go short a 17, well, you can do whatever you want. My suggestion, don't ever go short a $17 instrument. You've got infinity and beyond upstairs, and you've only got 17 bucks to the downside to possibly make. And that means they've got to go out of business, and that's not going to happen in one single day out there. So it does look like you're getting ready for a further pullback and retracement inside of SNAP. That confirmation will come with a close blow 1629 out there. Yvonne, you also wanted me to take a look at Amazon, the amazing one out there. What do we have here in Amazon? I don't have any kind of a topping signal. It has formed wave number six, that's letter F out there, and it is trading above the top of its profile. That's a bearish structured profile. It's trading above its green oscillator and change line. Its daily time frame is bullish. The weekly time frame says, hey, Stevo, not so fast. Why? Because it's going to confirm a TD9 count top this week. Now, it also has a Rogemontum indicator signal triggered. You'd love to see a bearish reversal candle to confirm that top out there. Again, bar number nine is going to complete this week. It can be the bar following bar number nine that identifies that top. That seems more likely the outcome for me on Amazon because the daily does not have any kind of topping pattern. The monthly will complete a TD nine count top at the end of the month. Now, if this is really bullish out here, Amazon, and we know that it is bullish right now, but if it's super uber bullish, then the TD nine count on the uh, monthly time frame chart because that's going to complete that will fail out there but you've got too many topping signals longer term intermediate and longer term topping signals to suggest just be cautious on amazon i wouldn't sell it out there now could you short amazon yeah it's 150 dollar instrument out there I don't know if I would uh, short the strongest, one of the stronger stocks. It's not really the strongest because it hasn't made it back to its size out there. But in any event, Yvonne, that's what we're taking a look at. We take a look at Amazon. Thanks so much for that request. Uh, inside the Tiger's Den, geez, uh, was Dano. I think it was Dano. Was it Dano who wanted to take a look at Occidental Petroleum? If it wasn't, I apologize for screwing that up. Here we take a look at Oxy. Today is going to become bar number eight of a TD9 count. That says the TD9 count top could occur between today and Wednesday of next week out there. You do have price that is trading above its TD9 count breakdown level. The last bottom that formed out here was bar number nine of a TD9 count. I would say odds favor this moves higher come uh, Friday. But I, I don't know whether it's going to move higher or not. But it does look to me like it's going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count top come Tuesday. On the weekly time frame, um, we just have price consolidating, trading with inside its profile. We have that same signal inside the monthly time frame. So perhaps where Occidental Petroleum will get its P's and Q's from is from Lightsweed Crude. It turns out that that was Dano's request as well, was to take a look at both of these instruments. So now let's go take a look at Lightsweed Crude and see what it is doing. Because if it's going higher, well, chances are Occidental Petroleum will also make that move higher out there. Here we take a look at the February contract. That's the uh, front contract here for Lightspeed Crude on a monthly time frame. You can see the price is pulled back to test support. On a weekly time frame, we don't have any kind of bottoming signal out here. You are going to get a three river. It looks like you're getting a three river morning star, but it doesn't really confirm a buy the D point pattern on a weekly basis. And the reason is this retracement, the distance between the high from September 29th and uh, the uh, the high of October 20th is like 90 percent. 
There's no way a retracement like that can go ahead and generate an A to B equals CD pattern out there. Not unless you want to make it up. And Stevie's not going to make it up. But we do have a bullish reversal candle on the monthly time frame. That says you've got some real good support or should have support at 67.98. Now, the daily time frame, Rose Mintum indicator signal that has been triggered. Price making its way up to its bearish structured sell zone. That is between 75.43 and 77.55 out there. Would I sell it? No. Now, I don't, you know, not with these signals that we're getting. The weekly is really telling us it wants to move up to 77.26. So suggesting that the daily wants to get up towards the top of that profile at 77.55. What else do we see out here intraday-wise? Not really much. Nothing here that I'll spend too much time on out there. So, Dano, if that was you, I hope that that provided you with the information that you were looking for. And uh, have a uh, have a fantastic uh, Friday. Let's go to our next request coming in from the Tiger's Den. Man, I did a horrible job of writing down who was requesting what. I think that might have been San Sat P or San L or I apologize. Um, but the request, well, oh, that wasn't it. The question was to take a look at Qualcomm. Uh, so let's get up to the Qualcomm charts out there. So Qualcomm just entered wave number seven to the upside. That's letter G that you see on my screen out there. That needs a lower high to confirm that pattern. Rhodes Mentum indicator signal has been triggered. That needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm. Otherwise, the daily chart looks very good. Why? Because price is trading above or appears to be trading above the top of that daily profile. We come back from this break. We'll finish taking a look at Qualcomm. We'll take a look at Hutt. And then it looks like we have a request for the New York Stock Exchange and BBAI. We'll get to all of them, I believe. Be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. 
WSNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So let's take a look at Qualcomm here. Let's go to the monthly time frame chart out there. We take a look at that. It is bullish as can be. You had a beautiful TD9 count pattern that uh, confirmed back in November of 2022. That level was tested a couple of times and held out there. And so you couldn't bust them to the downside. What's Tom expression? You try to bust them to the upside. And that's what's going on as we speak this month. Price is trading above the top of its profile, 132.25. This says longer term and wants to make a move up towards 171.84. The weekly says, yeah, I'd like to do that, but I'm going to form bar number eight this week. And I should likely form a weekly top sometime next week or the week after so put all that together keep your eye on the daily time frame chart for qualcomm keep your eye on 139.56 if price closes below 139.56 we've got that change in trend signal that the weekly chart and then the daily chart would be communicating to us and the monthly chart would just say i've got to wait a little while before i get up to that 171.84 level uh, we had a request to take a look at hut out here h-u-t is a ticker symbol and what do we know about it? It looks bullish on the uh, daily time frame. We don't have any kind of a uh, topping pattern out here. The weekly time frame is going to close above profile resistance and some prior swing points. Uh, that is very bullish. The monthly is trading above its oscillator and change line. So we got bullishness all across the board when we take a look at uh, Jabba the Hutt out there. So that looks uh, very good. Where is price likely headed to? You know, I would say that on the daily time frame, it's, uh, it's, it's headed towards 1675. And on the weekly time frame, it's headed towards 1820. And on the monthly time frame, it's headed towards 2917 out there. Uh, what was the last thing? Oh, was a take a look at the uh, the New York Stock Exchange advanced client oscillator. Let me get over there real quickly here. That is still um, it's back it's back to uh, an overbought condition. Uh, overbought conditions take place when the New York Stock Exchange advanced client oscillator get above plus 150. Right now the reading is 150.39 out there. Uh, so it still tells us that buyers are the ones that are in control of the general markets. Folks, thanks so much for being here uh, for all week. Have a fantastic weekend. Those that celebrate Christmas have the merriest of Christmases. Those that don't celebrate will have a wonderful weekend. And we'll look forward to seeing you on Tuesday morning, 11 o'clock sharp for the 11 a.m. update. Take care, folks. Be safe out there.